we're secluded, but we kind of have everything we need right here. Well, first off, being nominated for MA Rider of the Year is a huge accomplishment in itself. And, you know, I've been nominated a couple times before, but it was always kind of a goal of mine. For 2017, I had a really strong year and kind of just did well in everything. It was just really awesome to uh, get that against, you know, the other field of riders and the other people who have won it before. I started out from the get-go being a trials kid. I'd go to trials events with my parents and my dad competed in the, at the pro level. My dad was definitely a solid trials rider. His nickname was The Animal. Like all his old timer buddies still call him Animal whenever they see him. Instead of like riding over the rocks, he would just like smash through them. And he was just a strong, a strong guy. And he, I mean, he was a really good trials rider, but he, you know, he worked full time, gnarly mechanic for a living, heavy duty diesel mechanic. He always says, you know, he wished he could have put more into it, but you know, he was dedicated to what he did. And just like when I started riding, he was really dedicated to uh, helping me kind of keep progressing to the next level. You know, every night before I go to bed, I'd have my little special blankie and I'd set up like obstacle courses and I would have my little play motorcycles and I would like ride trial sections on my blankie. It's all I knew really. And, you know, I grew up at the era where, you know, you didn't have internet. We were maybe a little outdated growing up a little bit. You had to turn the knob on the TV to change the channels. So, you know, I didn't really grow up with motocross. I just grew up with what I knew and what my dad did. Motocross, I thought it was really cool and, and awesome, but, you know, I didn't really look up to motocross stars like, you know, most kids do. I looked up to professional trials riders on the international level. When I was 19 years old, I went and bought my first dirt bike, real dirt bike. I still really enjoyed trials, but I didn't really have anyone to ride with. And I got my enduro bike and like I had a bunch of buddies who are always willing to ride and down to do something. So it was just something new and exciting. And I felt like every time I'd ride, I'd get better instead of where trials where I kind of got to this level. And it was so much work to get to the next level. And I had so much skill from my trials background and it really carried a lot over into the enduro world. And I could see different lines and aspects to hit different things. And a normal dirt bike, everyone just thinks you'd go to the track and hit jumps, but you know, I, I kind of like the whole Billy Goat thing. I'm, I definitely feel really connected with like the rear wheel. Like I kind of always know where the rear tire is at. I've always kind of felt like in the rocks and stuff like that, I've had an advantage where I can kind of see different lines. You know, I'm really kind of meticulous, I feel like when I ride, I always want to be on my, on my line and, and hit it right. You know, I knew I had a weakness and it was intensity and aggressiveness. So I've, I've definitely put, put in the hard work to realize my mistakes and my weakness. Once I started changing my training and, and uh, going to the moto track and trying to battle faster dudes, the next thing you know, I was up there first, second place, and now I've got three enduro cross championships. I think it's tough for people to realize what their weakness is, but you know, accepting that and putting the hard work in to change that will definitely you know keep that progression level going. You now I, I consider myself for sure like a meticulous, calculated rider. You know, I got my engineering degree, so maybe I'm really analytical and I think about everything. But I think in terms of consistency and through the whole year of a championship, and you know, keeping your eyes focused on that ultimate goal, I think. Being a meticulous, calculated rider is a huge thing. You know, I think I'm known as not the fastest guy on the track, but probably the smartest and most consistent and calculated. Obviously, SoCal is known as the mecca of motocross, and you know, the industry's there, all the riders are there. You know, I grew up kind of here in NorCal, Royal Oaks, California, and uh, you know, I lived with my parents the first 20-something years of my life here. You know, it's just. It's kind of different pace here and a little bit slower and it was nice living up here and now my dad, you know, he's pretty much dedicated to helping me be the best I could be, best rider as a trials kid growing up. You know, it's just awesome having a little bit of property and, you know, we saw all my little trial sections. I still dink around on them here and there, but now they're the goats playpen that we got. You know, as I, as a trials rider, it was, you know, it was awesome. You don't need much property to be ride trials and bought us super crappy skid steer that's definitely paid for itself like more than 10 times now. I think, you know, being up here has kind of helped me keep my head out of the mess and not get too, you know, involved in with things I shouldn't be messing around with. You know, it's it's good to go to SoCal, you get some good training in and stuff, but, uh, you know, being up here is not really a lot of other moto dudes, so, you know, when I go out in public, you know, I'm just a normal, a normal person, and, you know, I don't go to the Chipotle and see all the top moto supercross dudes hanging out, getting their lunch fix after motos, so, I don't know, I just feel grounded up here, and, uh, I don't know, I'm just, 
simple and I, I like riding motorcycles and it's uh, it's nice to have some, some greenery and trees instead of, you know, bushes and desert. <laughs>